Good morning, everyone. So, my name is Anas Nashef, Principal Engineer at Intel. Uh, I will be talking about Zephyr in general and the history behind Zephyr, how Zephyr became to be, how Zephyr was created, the ideas behind Zephyr, and progress over over time, show you some 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 of the major things that happened over the years before we launched the project as a open source project, all the way to where we are right now, and uh, you know a few thoughts about uh, the future as well and where we are going. So the assumption here that you are somehow familiar with Zephyr, but if you are not. Let's see how I can jump slides here. Uh, here we go. If you are not, a quick introduction. So the Zephyr project was started by Intel in 2014 and was publicly launched as a Linux Foundation project in 2016 uh, with Synopsys and XP and Wind River back then as, as the founding members. I'm saying here it was started in 2014, and you will see the details. That that's where the whole idea and the concept uh, was established. And it took us two years actually to take an idea or a, a need, all the way to making it uh, an open source project. Uh, you know, open for everyone, and, and you know, with with industry partners and so on. Yeah. So that's, if, if you have open source something internal, you know, in your company, you, you would know what I'm talking about. It takes a long time, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of processes, a lot of things that, you know, you need to get right to be successful in the open. Primary goals of the Zephyr project, uh, adoption was to, to, to have adoption by silicon vendors and the embedded community while embracing the open source and open ecosystem vision of the founding members and the, the the idea here was to to put something out there that solves the, some of the problems that existed back then in terms of fragmentation uh, not having like you know an, an, a real open source uh, uh, solution for embedded uh, uh, controllers and having something with governance and you know with, with besides being open source but also have have a community and something that is driven by the community yeah uh, the the idea also was to, to create a, a sustainable uh, open source system something that would survive over the years and something that uh, does not depend on one single vendor or a few vendors uh, uh, you know and uh, something that is driven by the community, obviously. Uh, doing that while providing value to firmware developers inside the, uh, within the, 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 you know, the, the founding members, but also others that actually have joined uh, the project later. Most of the goals actually have been achieved with the majority of silicon vendors adopting Zephyr. Uh, there are a lot of products that have been launched over the years, starting like from the first year all the way to, I mean, every day we hear about uh, new products uh, launched uh, using Zephyr. There are plenty of products out there that are using Zephyr we are not aware of. That's not something that boots up with a logo on your screen. That's something usually is hidden behind, you know, on, and on, on a controller or on a PC, and you don't get to see, you know, Zephyr booting and with kites, you know, showing how, like, like with Linux and with Windows, yeah. So that's, there, there's a lot of adoption out there. We try to track all of this. I will be talking about some examples there, but it's, it, you know, since the project has, uh, since the project has been launched, <coughs> we have seen a lot of adoption, and this continues to grow. Uh, the project also maintains like uh, uh, a major role in the open source community. I mean, we are not uh, a standalone project. 
uh, you know, on an island in the middle of an ocean. We, we actually collaborate and work with many other projects. And uh, the Zephyr itself became like an essential project and, and like ranked among the, the top critical open source project by, by Google, you know, uh, so a, a ranking that is maintained based on, based on uh, community growth, you know, activity and, you know, adoption and so on. So you can go, take a look at that and, and see other projects as well at the same level uh, as with Zephyr. So just to give you an idea where we are, and I mean, these numbers are, you know, give and take. So don't quote me there. Uh, it's not uh, accurate by, by the unit there, but it gives you an idea. So as I said, project was started 2014, launched 2016, uh, a growing number of contributors. Uh, this number I just got from GitHub the other day, over 80,000 commits. I usually, you will see the reference to commits as, as, a, as a metric uh, across uh, all over the slides. That's not something I usually like because this is like a very bad metric in my opinion. But at least when you compare apples to apples, that's actually, uh, you know, it gives you an idea, you know, about projects and uh, activity in projects. In terms of uh, hardware support, at the moment, we support um, at least 13 uh, different ISAS architectures. Uh, we launched the project actually with just three, x86, ARM, and, and uh, Synopsys Arc. Uh, in the meantime, we have different variants of those, like 64-bit. Uh, we have you know, more architectures added over the year. And I will show a few examples of what has been added over the years there. But it is, it is like something in terms of hardware support. It, it, it covers most of the things out there that, you know, would use a microcontroller or require an Arthos in this case. In terms of platforms, over 500 uh, from different vendors, over 50, uh, 40 releases uh, over the years. We just released. 3.4 uh, a few weeks back. We have two LTS releases behind us, long-term support releases, over 1 million lines of code. That's not, that will show you that this is not just, you know, uh, uh, an Arthos scheduler or anything. It's actually more than that with a lot of things integrated, a lot of, you know, uh, subsystems, uh, services, uh, drivers, hardware support, documentation, obviously, et cetera. This is the, the number of lines, lines of code in C. So there's, there, there's a, lot of, a lot of content there, a lot of things that you can use. Obviously, every software project has bugs, yeah? So we have, not proud of the number, but it's something to show, yeah? 376, uh, close issues that shows you where we are in terms of we also fix bugs. We don't, don't just introduce them. So over 11,000 over the years, uh, and in terms of contributions and how things go into the project, we use GitHub and, you know, the, we got to the, this number of commits and this number of lines of code uh, with over 40,000 pull requests. And that's a lot. Yeah. So uh, with that said, I mean, and, and going back to the title of the presentation, when, when you look at the Zephyr project, the first thing, you know, probably you want to see how, how all of this has started. And you'll see this, uh, you know, as typical, typical in, a, in a Git repository, you know, when, when you have written something and the first commit, you have no inspiration what to write, first commit, right? I mean, this is very typical or initial import or whatever, very typical. And that's, you know, what happened back then in 2015. And obviously, this is not like somebody submitted, submitting a readme file and then things started. This, this was, you know, uh, uh, something that existed somewhere else. And, you know, you, the, uh, the, way, the way it happens in, in commercial entities and, you know, you, you just squash everything and just put it in one commit. Yeah. So obviously, there was something before that. Yeah, a lot of activity getting to this point. 
and this is this is almost one year before the public release and this was required because as i said earlier when you release something like zephyr uh, and artos where you're actually looking for uh, collaboration and uh, you know uh, members of the project and and you know doing things in open source picking the right license picking the right name uh, creating the infrastructure around it you have to do a lot of preparation so a lot of work has gone into making this happen before the the public launch in 2016 in february 2016. so the commit i have just shown is is here basically and that's uh, well you can see my oh, actually yeah so it's the uh, you know in april 2015 Obviously, a lot of things happened before. So, this is not a lot of work has happened. I will go into that. But this this uh, uh, timeline here shows you basically uh, a lot of activity over the years. Obviously, a lot of things. I mean, I, I didn't go into what happened last month or, or you know last year. I mean, there are a lot of things still happening. It's not like the the project is becoming inactive or anything like that. The, 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 the purpose behind the slide is to show that, okay, we have launched and there was a lot of things because, because it was launched with an idea, with a goal, and, and probably like, you know, it, it was small enough that, you know, it, it worked the way it was. But when the project grows, when you get more adopters, when you get more members, when you get more views, and ideas about how to solve the problem when you want to support it on, on different architectures, things start add, adding up. And certain things that you have launched with might, you know, a few layers later don't won't make sense or won't scale or whatever. So a lot of work went into creating or, or making that scalable and uh, and and usable by by many of the vendors that joined the project or the members who joined the project uh, later on so there was a lot of activity in the first three or four years that includes like adding new architectures changing build systems uh, introducing different ways of defining hardware device tree introducing different ways of uh, you know managing uh, uh, third-party modules uh, vendor has and so on using west and and so on and so on and directly after most of this activity we uh, managed to release lts1 1.14 in this case which uh, which was like one a major release in terms of like after uh, a long time in in, in development uh, that uh, many 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 members started using you know to base products on yeah and uh, that obviously after lts1 things didn't stop and uh, we continued to add more features i didn't so don't be angry if i didn't add your feature here in terms of like uh, a major milestone i just you know, you get the idea. A lot of things are going in every month, every day. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really significant. Yeah. There, there is like too much to list here. And, uh, going back to where things have started. So I was talking about the first commit. So obviously what I was showing earlier, that was not the, the first commit. Yeah. And that actually, you know, just to show you how things were staged, there was another first commit that uh, we had, which was how the project actually, you know, where, where, I mean, it gives you an idea where the project came from. And in this case, that was like in late 2014, uh, where we got uh, or we started collaborating with Wind River and we got like the first drop of code from Wind River based on VX Micro, or, or as they call it, Viber. Uh, now, the interesting part here is that this code, I mean, in one way or another, was already, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
running uh, as an RTOS on some products, so it was not some concept or anything like that. And probably this code is here. If you have like a laptop from three, four years ago, this code that I'm showing you is, is running on your laptop, an Intel laptop, yeah? Uh, so that, that was like production quality in many, in many ways, has a lot of features. Uh, that went beyond what Zephyr wanted probably to do. And that's where a lot of the work uh, uh, went in. So going back here, so the, 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 the project or the, the, the concept was announced uh, in early 2014 in an internal conference at Intel. And that's where a lot of work probably happened. I was not involved in this back then. In uh, Inside Wind River, we got this code job. We started working on the Zephyrification, I call that here, although back then it was not even called Zephyr. And I joined actually the whole effort like in early 2015. And uh, that's where we took this code and started, you know, uh, moving forward and, and making all of this work. D just a note here, quick note, is that before the public launch of Zephyr as Zephyr, Wind River also launched something based on the same code base a few months earlier as Rocket. This, this thing doesn't exist anymore, but it, it was supposed to be the commercial uh, version of Zephyr. It's like an, a downstream version of Zephyr that is, you know, maintained in a, in a cloud uh, IDE on River Helix app. And uh, yeah, this, I mean, if you go search for that, that doesn't exist anymore, obviously. Zephyr wa was a little bit uh, uh, maybe overpowering or people wanted to do the open source thing and, and not go with, with commercial solutions or it was, it, it was not uh, ready for prime time there, yeah. So having said all of that, I mean, and looking at, at, at the phases, so there are like the early days of Zephyr and a lot of things happened there, yeah. So just to give you an idea about what happened, so Basically, by the release in 2016, we were at approximately 7,000 commits in. Yeah. First commit in the current Zephyr tree was 2,200 commits in, squashed commits. Uh, so a lot of things happened in this year uh, where that's explained here. So we had to clean the code. You know, just imagine you're know, getting some code that was meant internally maintained and you have to put it out there, so you have to run it through check patch or clean up, uh, you know, the, the coding guidelines, coding style. Uh, the build system was a proprietary, like custom build system. So most of the people working on this came from a Linux background. So we embraced the kconfig cable. So we moved like from this uh, custom build system to, to kbuild. Uh, we introduced the device model, also based somehow inspired by Linux. And uh, we also removed a lot of features, a lot of features that actually we added later on uh, in the Zephyr project. So for example, the user space was implemented in one way, uh, but it was not, it was really a very custom uh, implementation. So we had to remove it, you know, and a few other features to be able to, to release that in, in open source. Uh, some of these features were added later. Obviously, when you release something, you want to have some hardware. So, you know, we added the, the launch hardware. I will show a picture of that and uh, started implementing the first APIs that actually exist until today in Zephyr, right? Like GPIO, I2C, I don't know. And obviously, a lot of these things went through a lot of transition and transformation, but the, 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 the origin of all of this, the, the device model and how it works, how the ABIs, etc. That that was there from the very beginning. If you are doing something with Zephyr, and this is like one of the strengths of Zephyr, is with the with the with the abstraction of uh, of hardware, you can. And that was like really the selling point, is that you 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 write an application, uh, your your application can be moved to other architectures or other vendors without changing too much. You still have to change here and there, but the idea is that your ABI is hardware agnostic in this case, yeah. 
And that was the selling point and, and in terms of like uh, getting vendors uh, uh, buy-in uh, and getting more members. But it was also very important for us at Intel because this is also where we wanted to go in terms of like pushing Zephyr as, uh, uh, you know, an Artos to replace like custom implementations of uh, embedded controllers uh, uh, in the company. License, just a quick note on license. So originally, actually we wanted to release that as BSD, but at that time we were like in, in lots of negotiations with different potential members and one of them requested actually something else. So, you know, we had to go and replace or change the license from, from BSD to, to, uh, to Apache 2 in this case. And that's what we have today. Yeah, so Zephyr is released under Apache. Uh, obviously that, you know, the, the main problem there is that it's not compatible with GPL and, 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 and stuff like that. And this is uh, right now and given where we are back then, obviously that probably didn't make sense in terms of, oh, this really has nothing to do with Linux in terms of hardware support and so on. Right now we are seeing that, that there are a lot of use cases and people looking on using their existing drivers on Linux also on, uh, on Zephyr. So yeah. That is a problem we have to deal with all the time. Yeah. Now, some some fun fact about Zephyr and its name. So this is actually I found the spreadsheet where we were like brainstorming names for the project, and lots of lots of candidates there, right? I mean, yeah, actually a very interesting one right now uh, when when you look at that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, some funny names there and things probably you will not use, but actually, I mean, in hindsight, you know, I would definitely have chosen something other than Zephyr, right? I mean, because if you go and Google for Zephyr right now, it's, 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 it's tough to find something that, 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 you know, basically our project. I mean, just look, I mean, this is, this is just probably 1% of the things <laughs> that you get, yeah? It's, it's really amazing. There are so many things called Zephyr out there. Inside Intel, we have, we have internal projects, internal products called Zephyr. And sometimes I get emails, you know, and I have no idea what they are talking about, yeah? It's, it's, it's really confusing. I mean, we have to live with that. It's, uh, it's really, uh, yeah. It is hard, yeah. Actually, last night when I was researching, I even found out that ZephyrProject.org, our domain, was, was taken like 20 years ago by some, you know, real whatever, uh, hobbyist site or whatever. I mean, this is, this is a very busy name. So just to go back to uh, how we launched, we launched basically with Bortsa Bot, actually for, I said, three architectures. And these are the bots that we launched with, yeah? So there was the Arduino 101. Actually, the main reason why Intel started all of that, if, if, if you remember, there was the Intel Curie, which is like a, a microcontroller that actually had three architectures on them, on it, yeah? So it, was, it has x86, it has ARC, and it had ARM. The ARM part was a, a Nordic uh, BED controller that actually ran basically uh, a custom firmware but the idea was to run Zephyr on the Intel, the x86, and the Synopsis Arc. So that's where we have launched with. Obviously, we had support for, uh, <coughs> you know, generic uh, uh, ARM boards, like Freedom Board in this case was also one of the main or uh, first boards to be supported, Arduino Duo and Intel Galileo, if you remember these days, yeah. Uh, you could actually run Linux at that on this thing as well, yeah. But Actually, Yocto, I think, used to run on this. But we used that for development. And until recently, actually, we had some drivers, like, you know, from, these, from the days of Galileo and, and Arduino. These ports actually don't exist in Zephyr right now. I mean, nobody's using them. I, I don't want to be maintaining them. So I, actually, we removed them at some point, yeah. So going back to that, you know, growing and developing an Artos for everyone, that's, that's really the, 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 when, when a lot of, we were getting a lot of, a lot of contributors, a lot of, a lot of members, the project was growing. And I said earlier, 
there was a lot of things being introduced all the time. A lot of a lot of churn, right? So I was talking about the build system earlier where we had to move internally from K build to, to sorry from a custom to, to K build. So then we decided to, to move to CMAC, yeah. Because K build didn't really work well on Windows. Yeah. And uh, we wanted actually to expand our user base and Windows actually is very important platform to support network i mean network by the way I, I i didn't touch on that but networking and bluetooth were also like uh, uh, you know features that were there from the very beginning so bluetooth as i mentioned because we were talking about iot and and you know ble uh, based devices uh, so we had like a host controller when we started and over uh, like in this period of Zephyr where a lot of things were added or, or, or changed, we also added the, the Bluetooth controller, the Nordic, Nordic best one. And that's also where when, when Nordic joined the project. So uh, we started with a Contiki based stack. Uh, you know, over time we moved to a native implementation. The kernel, we moved to a you know, from uh, the, the, the design of the kernel that we had, which is, was based on a dual kernel mode, like nano and micro, I will talk about it in a bit, to a unified kernel. Over the years, we moved from Gerrit to GitHub, we moved from like some, some random CI provider to GitHub Action. That, there are like a lot of transitions like that. I, I'm, I'm just going in, into one here. Uh, one, one of the major transitions that we had, and I'm glad we did it like very early on, was moving from a dual kernel model to the unified kernel. The dual kernel model, as, as uh, you know, you can see here in the picture where we had the nano kernel, which is like at the bottom, and a micro kernel. The nano kernel would actually run uh, cooperative threads. Uh, we call that fibers. And uh, the microkernel runs uh, preemptive uh, threads, which we call tasks. And there was a lot of problem with this design. It worked probably for certain use cases, but as a general ATOS and to be able also to compete uh, with whatever was available out there, we, we, we needed to clean this up. And the problems are listed here. I hope that's big enough. Yes. So uh, basically, it was not really intuitive. Uh, there was double context switching, something we w obviously we want to avoid, and a lot of duplication between the, the, the nano kernel and the micro kernel. So objects would have to be Im sorry implemented twice, things like semaphores, mutexes, and so on. And it, it was not really efficient. So basically, the unified kernel made the kernel basically we, we created the concept of yeah okay you have preemptible threads and uh, we have cooperative threads uh, we uh, moved away from fibers and tasks into threads yeah so we had like one way to to create threads and uh, yeah one limitation was cooperative threads were, were not able to to talk or or, or uh, use uh, many objects so that actually went away when we do, uh, did that. And uh, all of that was uh, done with or, or accomplished by introducing a new API that uh, uh, you know, provided some, some level of compatibility. So the transition period like, was a little bit long, but we were able to move uh, away and, and all users uh, moved to the unified kernel and we don't have the confusion we had initially because like well, this was like the most common question should i use nano kernel or should i use micro kernel and you know obviously this this was and, my, and, and the name micro kernel obviously is very confusing as well because you know when you see micro kernel you assume this is like a, a true micro kernel which is it's, it's really not so with that, going to the last phase, which is basically the phase where we have adoption, products, and, and really self-sustaining ecosystem. Yeah? Uh, that's where we have started, as, as I have shown you, right? And that was really very limited, a few boards, some chemo support, things that you can put in your pocket. But now, and thanks to Bricks here, 
that's where Zephyr is running, right? I mean, wind turbines, this is just like, uh, you know, shows you the extent and, and where we have gone, you know, in terms of like having Zephyr, uh, having uh, Zephyr running uh, on, on, on critical systems like a, a wind turbine providing power to, to millions of people. And uh, this is just an example. There are so many, we have like a web page listing all the, the products running Zephyr. And uh, th this, is, this is really growing. And going back to, to the whole open sourcing and, and the whole vision and how we wanted the project to grow, it was very important to us, at least at Intel, when releasing the project, is that this will never be perceived or, or looked at as an Intel project. That was always like really confusing. Oh, Intel, oh, you guys don't, I mean, what, what do you know about embedded systems, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I think we did a very good job, although we, we started like very strong because that, that, that project came really from Intel and Wind River. But the idea here, I'm looking at, at how the project has been growing over the years, like in terms of contributors, in terms of uh, 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 members and so on, immediately after the launch, you will see that the, the members or community, community in general, uh, growth continue to go up all the time. We at Intel, obviously we have a, you know, a lot of interest and we, we are very uh, invested in this. Uh, continue obviously to contribute. We didn't drop the ball or anything like that. But there was no there was no plan or anything to oh we want to have control. I mean right now, when you talk about Zephyr, people don't associate associate that with Intel. Back then it was because I mean we just had a few bots, most of them Intel uh, related and so on. But now we are just like one player among many. Yeah. Uh, so that that gives you an idea. And this is like the way when when I created this chart, I was doing that for something internal, and I look at that. This is really what I want to see in every project like launched, yeah, because th there are different ways how you can put things in open source. You can just like put something in GitHub and, and go away and let people figure it out on their own, yeah. We definitely wanted the growth, the industry collaboration and, and the governance as well. And, and that's how, how you see that the project is successful. It's not, it's not really run or governed by, by, by one entity. So, uh, evolving and uh, self-sustaining open ecosystem is like one of the main things that uh, we see right now, like in this last phase, is that there are a lot of things happening in so many different ways. So getting things, things done in Zephyr can be done in, by those who need a feature, for example. You need a feature, you submit it, you know, you submit a pull request, you submit a, a, an RFC, uh, either to support your own hardware. And we have many vendors that are not even members of the project, you know, and they, they, they you know, they, they submit their uh, hardware architecture if needed, or, you know, extend uh, uh, architecture support to, to support their, 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 their boards, uh, add SOC support, add the boards, add the drivers, and they can do that on their own, right? Uh, and uh, this can also be done for generic features, you know, like a new subsystem or, or, or things like that. Obviously, a lot of the work happening in the project happens through collaboration. Yeah? So major features usually is something that everybody is interested in. This is different than adding a driver for a specific hardware. When, I'm add, when, when somebody adds a logging subsystem or, or, or POSIX support or you know, can support, yeah? This is something that you will not be using on your own. This is something that the community need to participate. That's why we have, we have like different forums where such features are discussed. Our APIs are never stable unless they are supported on different platforms. Uh, so you can submit something for your own platform right now, but it, 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 it's, it's experimental until there are other users, yeah. Uh, and there are also other models where we, we can see a lot of things happen is that, you know, if you can't implement the feature, if you are interested in a feature, you can, there are members in the project and also outside of the project, like 
different people who are involved in the project that can go and implement the feature for you. And we see that this is this is like a healthy ecosystem. And if you if you have enough power with with your vendor software vendors, you can go ask them. You know, hey, my IDE doesn't support Zephyr. Can you go do that? Because I am paying a licensing fee. And we see that all the time. Whether it's an IDE, whether it's like some tracing debugging tool and and this is this shows that there is interest similar like with compiler yeah and and that's that's really successful so this is approaching the the end of the presentation the, the last slide is looking forward so obviously we want to maintain the, the project health and and scale up to support growing user base contributors and members we are at this level where we see growth all the time in terms of like people submitting change, uh, pull requests, member joining the project, people asking questions. Uh, we are at this stage where we have our own conference, right? Thank to you uh, for joining. And, and this, is, this, is, this is all really great. And I expect all of that to grow uh, in, in, you know, over the years. I mean, we are just getting started, yeah? Uh, we want to focus, we just had a, a TSC face-to-face, -face. actually yesterday we had a lot of discussions and I think one of the main things that we want to be focusing on is, is user and developer experience. So we want to make migration between releases easy, uh, maintain obviously a stable and, and, and rich API. Uh, we want to, you know, continue uh, to aggressive, uh, basically, uh, 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 pursue project safety and security goals this is like some of the one, one you know two of the pillars of the project safety and security and there's a lot of interest from different vendors and different members of the project to make this happen and we are looking into doing that and uh, we want to also uh, in, uh, enable and encourage people to use to, to more rely on something like like lts you know for product releases and next year we are planning to release the third LTS. Yeah, so that's where a lot of the planning happening right now and a lot of the activities trying to figure out what do we want to have in this release and how we want to release that. So with that, and if you have further questions, if you want to interact with us, uh, later today we have a session called Meet the Maintainers, where we discuss you know, different roles and responsibilities in the project and how we uh, keep up with the project growth. So this is going to be in this room as well at uh, around four o'clock. So please join us if you want to interact with people who are actively working on Zephyr, uh, or if you have any questions. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, I know we have just two minutes for questions, yeah, or three minutes, yeah, but go ahead if you have any questions. Uh, well, uh, if we have support for Intel Xeon, Anas, yes. can you uh, repeat the question? Yes, the question was if we have support for Intel Xeon. Zephyr should run on Intel Xeon as well, but it, it's like very basic support in terms of like running on the architecture. But if you are looking for support for all of the extensions and, and the features a Xeon processor would have, that would be something that need to be added. Like, you know. You have to steal my laptop, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, the history, uh, so he, he, the question was about history back into Zephyr. So this is, uh, uh, a, a lot of that go back like 20 years ago, yeah. Uh, I mean, the way, the, the transition of the, the OS, you know, from I think some Italian company to, to Wind River and then to Intel. The, the history I have goes basically to the, first first commit that I, I, I showed, yeah. Uh, anything be beyond that, I, you know, is, is actually if you go and diff the code that we have, you will not find any similarity. You, you will not even see, you know, that it is coming from this code it's because Zephyr has changed so much, right? So if you're trying to bisect or something like that, you, you, it, it will not work. Yeah, I can tell you that, yeah. 
Go ahead. That, that's uh, probably all the time we have on us. Sorry? Uh, we're at time. Yeah, okay. So thank you very much.